Disclaimer, this is not something that will be a common thing. This is simply me just throwing in my opinion on something that will never happen, since Nintendo would be having snipers ready to take me out if I prove my love to them by making fan-made content. If you want actually good theoretical fighting games, go check out Thorgy's Arcade. Fire Emblem, a well-beloved RPG franchise that has made its way into our lives. Whether you knew of this originally japanese only franchise since its debut, or you raged about their existence in Smash Ultimate, you can't deny that this documentary full of waifus has been ingrained into gaming culture as a whole. I love Fire Emblem as much as Persona, and Nintendo knew this by making a crossover with Persona that somehow worked. The first Fire Emblem game that I've ever played was Fire Emblem Fates Birthright, and my favorite within the franchise is Fire Emblem Three Houses, the latter having lore everywhere you look. The characters, the strategy, the villains... Okay, the last thing is a hit or miss, but you can't deny that we have some powerhouses. A lot of people know of Fire Emblem through Smash Brothers, and a common joke there is how Smash is basically just Fire Emblem the fighting game, considering the vast amount of Fire Emblem characters, including the gender bent variations, despite Mario, Pokemon, and Legend of Zelda having as many reps. But that got me thinking. What if Fire Emblem was a fighting game? What if Nintendo saw Samurai Showdown and Soul Calibur and thought, Okay, but what if we threw in an anime swordsman of our own in there? Now be aware this is my best guess. I am not a representative of Nintendo, because then I would make sure every Nintendo console does not self-destruct. Again, this is just some stupid ripoff that I am disguising as inspiration, because Thorgy's Arcade does this shit way better than I do. And hey, if I'm lucky, maybe you can give a bit more insight into this. The first thing to go over is how the gameplay works, because a game isn't jack shit unless there's jack shit to do. Starting off with the HP, everyone is going to have 100% that fills up two rows. But everything else, I can't really think of a lot of things. At best, just make it like Soul Calibur, where it's a mostly 2D arena where you can step left and right. But maybe I can put in something. See, as we know in Smash Bros, almost every Fire Emblem Red has a counter. So that is what I'm going with. Every single fighter here will have a counter. Like in Pokemon Tournament, but it works as in Smash Bros. You have to hit it in order to actually counter the opponent. In terms of combos, I'd say that it should play like Street Fighters, where you just gotta do what you can to build up your meter. There's gonna be a comeback transformation, like the Dragon Ball Fighter Spark, or MVC3's X Factor, and all that stuff. I'll call it Brave Arts, after the Brave Variations of the Fire Emblem Heroes. Their super meters will be at a maximum of 7 bars, but they got 3 supers like in Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm also gonna throw in some flying units and cavalry units, that revolve the same way as Jojo Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle, where the horse riders can have the option of getting off their steeds. Finally, in some titles you can alter classes of characters, making them something different than what they started off with. But here, I'm gonna make them stick to one, maybe two weapons, and that entirely depends on what their starting classes were at the beginning of the games, as well as their default appearance in Fire Emblem Heroes, should it add anything else to the character. Plot-wise, I'm gonna take some bits of inspiration from other games. All I can think of is this having some relevance to Fire Emblem Heroes, where you can just summon allies. This game just randomly summons characters from across space and time, like in Mortal Kombat 11, without Kotal in a wheelchair one-shotting everybody. And the host is a bland villain wants to rule all of reality just because. The games do an amazing job with their characters, but their antagonists are just some power-hungry fools. Turbo Riding Advice puts it best! I hunger for power, for power's sake. Thankfully, we got a few good villains that make this list, some of which I am stretching the term villain as they're more of an antagonist, but I know at least two of you will have people to have AK-47s point at each other as they yell across the internet about who is right and who is wrong. Now then, assuming this does well and we get DLC, we're gonna have to look at two games for the fighters roster, going over some big fighting games involving swords. We have 2019 Samurai Showdown and Soul Calibur 6. Showdown's got a base roster of 16 people and Soul's got a roster of 20, excluding the guest characters. So that gives us an even 18. And we get three seasons worth of DLC because Samurai Showdown has four and Soul Calibur 6 has two. One massive warning though, there will be a ton of spoilers throughout the entire franchise. This isn't a joke, this isn't a meme. I will spoil fucking everything. So if you don't want to see shit from whatever you are binging, I should just get you the hell out of here. This is your only warning. Yes, 
the man, the myth, the fox-matching legend, Marth from Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, the pioneer of the Fire Emblem franchise that kickstarted his series in Japan specifically. We gotta have the poster boy of Fire Emblem be on this roster. That's like playing Smash Brothers and Mario's not a playable character. Oh yeah. We are gonna have to make Marth an all-rounder character, an easy-to-pick-up fighter that anyone can use if they want to know the basics of this game. Roy, the Super Smash Brothers representative from the Binding Blade. Roy being the Binding Blade series as the son of Lord Elwood, there was a lot of assumptions about this dude from the very beginning. We aren't going to go over that personality, but we are going to go over what we got in the real franchise. Just Marth 2.0 with some vast differences. Like a sword's on fire, and has slightly better defenses. Even more so, in the canon games, Roy isn't trying to mimic Asta's voice from Black Clover, but he is rather collected, knowing he has a lot to live up to thanks to his father, Elowood. He was so favorited that he was one of the winners of the 2017 Choose Your Legends bout. Oh yeah, pay special attention to that because it'll be very important. For Roy, we can make Roy a slight pressure fighter, being able to be a rushdown as a Smash counterpart, but you won't find a lot of moments to lay in the pressure due to how he feels inexperienced compared to his father, Ellawood. Ike from the Radiant Duology. Anyone who's into Smash Bros since the days of Brawl knows that Ike is not only a goddamn powerhouse with that big ass sword, but is the son of a mercenary on a quest to take down the Black Knight for killing the best father in all of Fire Emblem, Grail. Hello. My name is Ike! You killed my father. Prepare to die. Oh, fuck that! As a fighter, Ike will be a dominating character, using his swords to strike down his enemies at a massive hit rate, capable of taking on a lot of damage, but his attacks will usually have some end lag and start lag, allowing you to find some moments to counter him. Ike is where I will also explain something else. Should there be some alternate version of a character, be it a time skip or some alternate reality, I can use that as part of the costumes, as if they are alternate characters. For example, with Ike, one costume references Radiant Dawn, and another references Path of Radiance, they could also reference some characters' appearances in other media. Like, for example, with Marth, we have him wear his alternate costume from Smash, as well as some cut costumes from Smash 4, or previous incarnations, such as Marth and Tights. Similar case with Ike, who has a handful of appearances. And if I have to, I think for the super move, we can have Ike do what 5 year old me would do to every pinata at birthday parties, and have him perform the Great Ether from Smash. That would be the level 3, while level 1 would be Ike doing his explosion sword stab that works similarly to Marvel vs. Capcom 3's Magneto's Magneton Shockwave. It's going to be alright. Time to tip the skin! Robin from Fire Emblem Awakening. This one is the same case as Ike's costume, considering how both male and female Robin are canon to Fire Emblem. As for how they play, this poses a very interesting idea for me, because they don't only use swords. They use magic. They will be a zoner character, capable of shooting lightning, dark magic, water, earth, fire, and air attacks. They are going to be stage control fighters, capable of firing all of their magic at opponents, and should they fight up close and personal, they can use both the Leaven Sword and the Bronze Sword. The Bronze Sword can be used for close range attacks, while the Leaven Sword can be both close range and medium range, with Robin's magic going for far range. I also like to imagine that if they were to dash, they would just levitate towards their opponents. Pfft, screw gravity! And if I'm being a bit spoiled, we can make some special interactions with everybody, including Robin along with some others. Someone like KOF 15 or MKX, where the interaction usually happens at the beginning of matches. In Robin's case, they could have some interactions with characters from the Awakening games, such as... <laughs> what is this power? The 
clone of the modern era, Lucina from Awakening. Now here's something I want to make clear. Nobody will play the same. This pretty much made Smash fans hate Fire Emblem when you can just copy and paste Mark. A lot of Lucina moves and sets will be similar, but stat-wise, Lucina is completely different. I can't tell you two apart. All you white people look the same. What? We look nothing alike. She also ties into my alternate costume bit, as one of her outfits can be disguised as Marth. And if you plan on having a story mode like I brought up earlier, Lucina most likely wouldn't reveal her identity to an alternate world until the actual Hero King was there, and most likely joining later on in this plot. And he will be. Lucina will be a footsies character, considering how much running around she had to do to save her future, but not too much of a time paradox to get her out of the picture. I'm so sorry, everyone. I feel like I have no choice but to... Corrin from Fire Emblem Fates. Now I know what you're gonna say, and I am not against you. Josh Scorcher puts his best. That's the main reason that these confrontations even happen is because Corrin is an idiot. People may have reasons to hate Corrin because they follow the train of being a Mary Sue, and Corrin was tarnished even further when they were revealed to be in Smash 4. But I'm not gonna argue. I honestly don't see it, and that horse has been beaten beyond death. Hear me out. I kind of have some bias towards at least two characters when it was being DLC. I got into Fire Emblem first by playing Fire Emblem Fates Birthright, and with that being your first impression of Fire Emblem, you can somewhat see where my confusion towards Fates subpar plot. Then comparing it to the likes of Three Houses and Heroes, you can see that Fates tripped on the fifth hurdle. This is really because of Korn's fighting style. They are capable of turning into a goddamn dragon. Dragon! Ah! This presented something unique to me. First things first, I'm gonna have Korn's dragon form be a super thing, but they'll have moments where they use parts of it, such as shooting a paralyzing bubble or being a sentient lance. Korn is a heavy hitter with incredible speed and tough defenses, but of course, the weaknesses would be the lack of projectiles, so you can spam against them for a while, even having some ending lag. You know, the fighting game characters being incredibly powerful, but just throw everything in your character's gear at them, you can fuck with them while they have no way to defend themselves. It's not fun. Mother, stop spamming! I see you're awake now. Hey there. <laughs> there are better places to take a nap than on the ground, you know. Give me your hand. Our next fighter will be Krom from Fire Emblem Awakening, a prince that's dressed as a mercenary hobo leading the band of shepherds, and, if he isn't paired with Robin, is very likely paired with Sumia. This guy is a modern incarnation of Marth in terms of being a prince with a magic dragon slaying sword. Krom as a playable character is a hit or miss character. Hit or miss, I guess they never Huh? Ah, shut the fuck up! By that, I mean you're willing to make sure you hit or things won't go very well for you. Similar to his rash behavior and Han Solo actions that more than often gets him seriously injured at worst. What there is also to note is that he is Yusuke Kitagawa's ancestor and can use a persona as well, and when the falchion stops getting passed down, Yusuke just gets Goemon. What do you mean Krom was never an ancestor of Yusuke? So joining Smash consumes even the darkness itself! And now, we got the fresh face of the franchise, Professor Byleth Eisner from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I remember when everybody hated Byleth appearing in Ultimate, but outside of that angry shit show, Three Houses is a very memorable game! You can alter your classes and what they can do, you can fight demon monsters, you can go fishing, and there's lore everywhere! Every student goes through one form of pain or another, and I'm very jealous of how all of these guys get character development because after writing myself, 
I couldn't fit so many characters into one and develop them all at the same time. It's even more interesting with a sort of creator, making Byleth very similar to Ivy Valentine from the Soul Calibur series. Yes, Smash Ultimate gives Byleth the other hero's relics, but I can't see this happening. Canonically, Byleth can wield them, it's just that I want to stick with a sword for now. You'll see why very soon. Okay, at this point, we all know why I'm choosing these characters. It's because they were from Smash Bros, and I'll admit, I really used that as a means to decide a good chunk of the base roster. But in my defense, they have been very well liked as evidenced by the Chosen Legend ballots. Ike, Lucina, Krom, Byleth, even Korn had a runner-up in the last CYL ballots. So the cheat code is gone, and now, this is where the fun begins, so sit your asses down and prepare for the real challenge. In this fight. Kaida from Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. Wait, it's Sita? Sita was one of the very first recruitment characters throughout the entire franchise, as she was recruited at the very beginning of Chapter 1. Remember when I mentioned the whole Jojo horse thing? Well, Sita will be one of those fighters. She can fight on her Pegasus, but she is just as capable on the ground with her lance. Just don't think about how she was like in the anime. People don't like to talk about that. Shh, we don't talk about that! A special thing to note throughout all the flyers is that they are like Sentinel from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. They can fly, but only for a specific amount of time. We gotta do a lot of math to find out how long a Pegasus should stay in the air. If it is our fate to cross swords upon this day... Know that I will give it my all! Celica from Fire Emblem Echo, Shadow of Valencia. Some people got into Fire Emblem by awakening her echoes, and either way, we gotta add Celica in. As she clearly has support as she won the second Choose Her Legends ballot, making her based on her original version, who was not very popular compared to the remake. She can also play like Robin, using both spells and a sword to fight, but she has a rather lackluster defense due to her firm preference of peace over violence. If you think I can't hold my own, you're sorely mistaken. Lin from the Blazing Blade. For those in Smash, they may recognize her as that one assist trophy that is faster than the eye can track. And I find that rather interesting. She can be a rushdown character, attacking with blinding speeds. She was number one of the very first Choose Your Legends ballots, so that's an obvious reason why she should be in. Cordelia from Awakening. I could have put in Sumia, it could have been a sort of Sita thing, but Cordelia seems like a better option. Within Warriors, Cordelia was chosen instead of Sumia, and Cordelia has a better rating compared to Sumia, so that gives Cordelia a reason to join. One can make the argument that Cordelia is just an echo of Sita, but there is a difference. Cordelia primarily focuses on strength, while Sita primarily goes for speed with a lackluster defense, while Cordelia is slightly tankier. Now, this next one is where I will talk about my stretching of the word villain. I'm going to show one, but you will know who the other is right after. But I'm going to keep things simple for myself and pretend you don't know, for the sake of time. I've done well so far. But that was just practice. No more games. To the death! The High Prince of Hoshido. 
Ryoma from Fates. This is what I was talking about. Ryoma isn't the villain, and Xander isn't either. They're just pissed that you didn't choose them. You want to go home to your real family, but the family of your heart is on the other side. This was a great setup. But Corrin is dumb, a Mary Sue, blah blah blah, the horse is in a grave, why did I bring a bat? So anyways, Ryoma. Where to begin with this humanoid lobster? In the modern era, we think there are lizard people, but in the past, there are lobster people. This man is evidence of that. And his sword is a fucking beast. He will usually go up close and personal, but his super can have him summon a massive electrical explosion right at the enemy. About as big as a sentence attack, but it can be blockable. A footsie's character without any major projectiles, but his super is the only projectile. You're here. At last. Once and for all! Prince Xander of Nor from Fates. Wow, who could have seen this coming? I certainly didn't see this coming. I mean, who, who else could have? <laughs> this guy is who you fight first in Fates, regardless which game version you choose. And let it be known, when you get a version where Xander is with you, he is a goddamn beast, taking everything the enemy throws at him. He will be another cavalry fighter, riding his horse, and with great power. Similar to Ryoma, but he will have a laser beam shooting at his foes. Azura from Fates. This is also the case of sh because she was represented in Warriors. Azura is gonna have an interesting gimmick. You know how Phoenix in Marvel 3 is a glass cannon and she gets insane when she is defeated while having max bars? This would be the same thing here, though it's more like Gil's resurrection if it went up to about halfway or at least one third of her health. I know Azura can't sing herself for extra moves and canonically it would be killing her, but I wanted a no way to throw in her singing mechanic somehow. Okay, now two of the following will be genuine, actual, legitimate villains, and another is more of a reformed villain. I see that because you will know who I'm referring to a tad bit later down the line. <laughs> No charge, no resistance. Father! Zelgius, the Black Knight from Path of Radiance. This dude is an actual villain, an actual antagonist, and a genuinely good bad guy compared to all the other Darkness guys. He has been represented in Smash Bros. multiple times, has a me costume, has an assist trophy, and has a legendary spirit, so he clearly has his fans. He is very recognizable. Like I, he would have either no helmet or be in full armor, and he is like Ganondorf gameplay-wise. Incredibly tanky and powerful, but slow as molasses. Veronica from Heroes. And here's where I bring up yet another stretch of the term villain. Veronica started off as a villain in Book 1, but as the mobile game grew, so did she. She isn't all about tearing your head off anymore, but really now just wants friends. And people love her as she was second place in the 2018 CYL ballots. I would see Veronica as a mix-up character, due to how she grew in the games, starting off as a villain but slowly growing fond of the Aster gang, but also having a sort of possessed like attack, such as Sian Ko from Marvel 3, where Veronica goes berserk from her Embla blood. If you dare to oppose me, you are in 
indeed a fool. One who must pay the ultimate price. Cower before the might of Garneth. I'll be the architect of your undoing. Garneth from Shadow Dragon. Now see, that's a real villain. We have a variety of shit villains who just want to take over the world or rule it or whatever that we just got to go for the pioneer of that genre. I don't know if anybody has some major opinion on Garneth other than the fact that he looks like that vegan teacher if she took up Gwyneth Paltrow's psychic vampire repellent while having the argument logic of Amber Heard. This is really the case of he made history, therefore he makes it in. Like Bardock. I wanted to add in Iago and Baladar to fill in for Zelgius and Veronica, but then I realized that they have nothing interesting about them. Iago is just a yes man to Garen, and Baladar is just a cult leader, father of Robin, who just so happened to be the new vessel for his god Grima. No, I am your father. Because of course he did. But to my surprise, despite that power hungry fool that he is, people seem to like him. He always has a plan to fall back to should one fail. He puts in a lot of legwork and even has a failsafe, keeping the falchion should things go south while he resurrects Mede Medeus. Medeus? Medeus? I don't know. And is rather cunning and tactical, serving only himself, so he's a lot more than meets the eye. I see Garnef as a zoner character, as throughout the story, he would do whatever it took to complete his plans and would kick anyone away if they got close with his magic might. But if you get close, you can wail on his ass. And that is the base roster. This really is an interesting turn of events, so I would expect it to do relatively well, at least in the FE community. Now then, let's get ready to tackle the other characters. Time to tip the scales and make my path by allowing me to demonstrate. Let's go for the first DLC season. Let's promise we'll never end up like that, okay? Yeah, nothing will ever come between us. <laughs> Alm from Echoes. When you put in Celica, you gotta put in her childhood friend, her lover, Alm. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, this song and dance again. <clears throat> Alm will not be an Echo Fighter, he will be his own character. I see Farm Boy turn badass Luke Skywalker, I mean Alm, uh, having a super move where he remembers all of his allies, including Celica. Similar to Jojo Bizarre Adventure, Heritage for the Future version of uh, Joseph Joestar, Young Joseph, where he does exactly that. I still cry every time. Alm will be an all-rounder character, but focusing on precision, as his attentive attitude is compensation for his naive personality. This did won the men's ballot of the 2019 CYL ballot, so he has some fans. Speaking of 2019... Find anything? Not yet, sir. No. Someone's gotta be here. Keep looking. Sir! Micaiah, the silver-haired maiden from Radiant Dawn. Another winner of the CYL ballot, along with her bird, Yune. Tiny bird! Micaiah goes for light attacks. By that, I mean she's a sentient flashbang. If that flashbang can drop kick her jaw like the cloaker from Payday 2. She would be a keep-away fighter with her vast magic spells. Now, I wanted to place the gimmick of sacrifice in here, but I can't really think of anything. Unless we decide to make this a team-based battle like MBC or KOF, but having an input move exclusive to a specific mode sounds really dumb and sounds something more like, let me get see, in Mortal Kombat vs. DC at that one specific chapter. from the Blade Duology. As my name is Hexer, that means I canonically exist in, within the Fire Emblem universe. I don't make the rules, I just bend the hell out of them to make it look like I make the rules. Yet another winner of a CYL ballot one year prior, Hector was number one in the 2018 CYL ballots, and is voiced by the great Patrick Saints. So that means within Fire Emblem, this is my voice. Now to unleash all of my stand's power! Jotaro, weren't you mumbling something about being angry? Is this all the power you possess? 
got a bunch of questions, kid, and you're gonna answer them all! But before that, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you! This is where I was reborn. This is where you will pay! If I need to pummel him again, so be it. Oops, did I strike a nerve? It's a rare treat to see you lose your cool like that. I've got a deal for you. Beat me, and I swear I'll tell you everything I know. Way better than my Jay Baruchel sounding ass. That's not a compliment, I watched this as the end. His gimmick would be the fact that he's a powerhouse, swinging that huge ass axe around, but you could find some openings here and there. He's like Black Knight with a shorter range because of his axe. You know, massively powerful, really slow. I see you missed your big sister. <laughs> You're so cute. Camilla from Fate, the second place winner of the 2019 CYL ballots on the women's side, Camilla was a surprise to me. I remember when people would be upset over her. They didn't outright hate her, she was just incredibly controversial. The Euro manga Sensei of Fire Emblem, Fate's really pushed the boundaries, making her something I really shouldn't see on YouTube, and for good reason. Regardless, she seems to have some fans as she was second place. Here she will be a Pegasus character, or a Wyvern character, riding around in a Wyvern as she uses her axe, and is rather speedy due to her ability to slay enemies really quickly. And that there is Season 1! I feel like people will be against the fact that Camilla is here, but I really try to go for what the fans want due to the CYL ballots. Believe me, there are people angry that Byleth won second place in the 2022 ballot, so I doubt this would appease everybody. Now on to season two! Except, I have one big problem. If I show one person, then you would know who the rest would be right off the bat. But unlike Ryoma and Xander, they aren't the entire roster piece, or in this case, the entire season, so I don't have a lot of room to breathe. So, let's show them all right now! <laughs> That's right, this entire Season 2 will consist of the house leaders of three houses. And this isn't be just because of their commercial release for three houses either. The house leaders and Lysithia were chosen as the 2020 winners. Now this presented a big problem for me. Do I add Lysithia? Or do I add Yuri? Do I add a character that was voted? Or do I add the house leader to fit in the theme? I spent several days mulling over this. In the end, I've decided... Yuri. You see, the CYL ballot for 2020 was throughout January, and the Cindered Shadows DLC launched the following month, so we didn't know anything about the Ancient Wolves. Besides, they were included in Heroes anyway, with Yuri being number one of the recent Heroes Rises ballots, so Lysithia is not going to be in the game for now. At the time of making this video, Nintendo recently released Fire Emblem Three Hopes, and a lot of people are loving it so far. This is exactly what I was referring to when I would say I would stretch the term villain and say they are antagonists. This is what will get people to debate like hell in the comments. Finally, going back to my costume idea, this is why I brought this up. All these guys have a five-year costume after the professor took a nap. Emily, wake up. Five more minutes. He's been in a coma for two years. Okay, two more minutes. I didn't bring it up with Byleth because at best, their hair goes a different color, so they don't age. I think there's some science behind comatose people and age. I'm not a scientist, so now... It's time for us to get into this whole shtick! You all should know... I am not about to go easy on you today! Dimitri Alexander Bladed from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. We've all seen the meme at this point, kill every last one of them, moving on! I've mentioned at Byleth's placement that I didn't want to give Byleth the other weapons they got from Smash. This is that reason. The house leaders can actually use their respective weapons and not be overshadowed by their very sexy professor, Byleth. Who I'm convinced can alter anybody's sexuality. That professor has some power. I'm on to them. Mad Pat, back me up on this! In the case of Dimitri, he would mostly use Air Bar, a lance that can hit hard, and, from what we've seen in Three Hopes, 
Dimitri can even use it as a javelin and summon it back to his hands, Kingdom Hearts style. He will be a cavalry unit, just like in the Ash and Wolves DLC, as well as his appearance in Heroes that can lay in the pressure on enemies, like his very actions during the time skip where he slaughters everyone. But a smart enough opponent is capable of performing any counters against him. Our victory must be absolute, no matter what it may take. Edelgard von Cressville from the Adrestian Empire. Have you ever wondered what would happen if Kylo Ren was an actually good villain with legit motivations? You get Edelgard. Similar to Dimitri, I didn't give Byleth the smash weapon because Edelgard would be using a mirror, hitting like a flaming semi truck falling on your face. Like Camilla, Edelgard is the most controversial character, but she's not the most hated. Her actions of unifying Volin are entirely out of hand, while Claude's route is far saner. Despite that, she still has a following. She was voted as the number one girl for 2020, and for a super move, she can turn into the eldritch abomination known as Hegemon Edelgard. But like Corrin, this will only be a super move, but unlike Corrin, this will be a level 3 attack only. Similar to Nemesis from Marvel 3 or Baby Vegeta in Fighter Z. It's the same case here. As for the playing style, we're gonna make her a turtle character, in reference to her being a fortress knight in the Cinder Shadows DLC, as well as the time skip. As long as we can pull off the win, doesn't matter how. Claude Von Regan from the Leicester Alliance. In my first playthrough of Three Houses, I chose the Golden Deer because I prefer the bow as a weapon. Now I choose it because my boy is upside down. Like a normal person. You got a guy who wants to stop racism and is a hell of a charmer to be around. He is the first fighter to actually use a bow, so imagine how much that would change the game. I suppose I can add a bit more by giving him a sword like Robin, but we are mainly focusing on his weapon of choice, Fail Not. A light speed arrow that can snipe anybody. So he's obviously a zoner, or possibly a bait and punish at maximum due to his pension for making stomach poisons. Plus, you gotta have Joe Zija. That dear man is an absolute godsend. He will be a Pegasus fighter riding around on his wyvern, hiccup and toothless style. We're a unique bunch from all walks of life. Once you get to know us, I'm sure you'll love it. Yuri LeClerc from the underground town of Abyss. Here, we got Kagi Films to join our roster. Yeah, well, I'm friends with Kagi Films, pal. My standards are pretty low as it is. Yuri ha clearly has a lot of charm that helps him do great things. With his own relic, the Fetters of Dromi, not only can he be a master with a blade and knives, but he can also do some farting around, similar to Zelda's up special when Yuri needs a getaway. Of course, he would mainly be using a sword for some simple strikes and such. Now, here is something I can tinker with. As we know, every house has a variety of students, and many people have their favorites. Unfortunately, there's so much room for them, even in the Silver Snow Church of Sarah's faculty. But not Abyss. Abyss has four true members. The Ashen Wolves, the aforementioned leader Yuri, Balthus, Happy, and Constance. There's also Elfric too, but... Let's just say everyone considered him to be, in the words of Keith Howard, predictable. So we are going to stick with the others. Yuri will be a summon fighter. He will have a little bar that circles between the three people. And if you press some input, you get to use one of them and each of them does something different. Balthus will do a quick dash forward and throw a punch. Someone like Balrog. Happy will do a small trap before Yuri and anybody steps in it will be launched upward with a sudden beast. Like a mix of her sighing and her hero tones and Constance is going to be an anti-air assist, summoning an icicle straight up, considering the fact how she's a Pegasus flyer. There's gonna be a cooldown too, lasting about as long as Brawl Pokemon Trainer's down special. Right, so did you miss the part where I said I'm friends with Kagi Films? And now that that is out of the way, I think it's time we go to our final season, and trust me god, I held off my bias for a damn long time. This'll be worth it. So, without any further ado, let's head on into Season 3.
This axe is known as Garm. It's a weapon from Leon's homeland. Ephraim from the Sacred Stones. Originally, I wanted to put in Takumi and Tharja in the DLC roster, due to them being runner-ups in the CYL ballots, but then I realized that this may have some dislikes given to me if anybody can see them. Takumi is really hated, getting blamed for fucking everything, and Tharja, I'm pretty sure people only loved her because she's a big titty goth GF. So, by that, I decided to put in a frame in. If not him, then maybe his twin sister, Erica. It was kind of hard for me to decide between the two. They were both winners, but ultimately I decided to give it to a frame, you know, due to him having the higher votes than his sister, comparing their highest. I'm gonna have Ephraim be a hit and run character due to how he used his tactics against those mercenaries due to his knowledge of his terrain and strategy. <laughs> I make it a point to dress in a tastefully mature way. It's worth the time. Lysithia from Three Houses. Now is Lysithia's time. Even if you didn't get a chance, Lysithia still has fans. I imagine her whole shtick would be to have her use her magic spells, dealing major damage, but also defending herself with a training sword. Being a mage, Lysithia can also levitate like Robin, and for a super attack, she can use dark spikes, the bane of a Death Knight's existence. That's a nice cake you've got there, Yuritsa. Would be a shame if there were some dark spikes here. Of course, with her childish body and only a training sword in hand as a means of defense, getting a strike from her will be equivalent to a 38 special snake shot. I'm pretty sure 38 Special Snake Shot has the same amount of kinetic energy as a six-year-old with a sock of bopper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know you! You... you do? Sure, I've heard all about you! You have? You're a great hero! I am? I am! It's an honor to meet you, Lord Ellawood. I'll kill you! Ellawood from the Blade Duology, the father of Roy who won second place in the 2019 CYL poll, Ellawood is rather well liked, as Roy's legendary outfit had him look exactly like his old man. I'm thinking Ellawood can be a surprise cavalier. He would fight on the ground, but when he wants to, he can summon a horse by his side like an awakening. His main gimmick would focus on his speed based on his growth rates compared to his son Roy. He can do some quick combos and he will make sure you just sit there. And now, the final DLC character. A character who I wanted in for so damn long. I have been patient with this. So now, here you go. My blood compels me! Marianne von Edmund from Three Houses! This is where my bias shines! I am choosing my favorite character within Three Houses and I am not the only one, as the Temple of Marianne on Reddit did everything they can to vote for the best girl. She is going to be Smash 4's Bayonetta. She's going to break the game. She's going to make people want to pick her. She... Get out with it. Yes, get out with it. But, but it's Marianne. Get on with it. Ugh, fine. Now, in all seriousness, she would be a mage, but unlike Robin or Lysithia, she can also use a sword as well. The other two really would have a sword should the enemy get too close. But Marianne will be using the Blute Gang how savage to strike when she wants to making her a mix-up character with a single super move that makes her a summon fighter making her summon Dorte the horse to ram into opponents and that's all the characters for this game Ohm, Azura, Byleth, Sita, Camilla, Celica, Krom, Claude, Cordelia, Corin, Dimitri, Edelgard, Elwood, Ephraim, Garnet, Hector, Ike, Lucina, Lynn, Lysithia, Marianne, Marth, Micaiah, Robin, Roy, Ryoma, Veronica, Xander, Yuri, and Zelgius. Of course, there are a ton of other things to consider when it comes to this type of thing, such as stage, story, and several other stuff. But I want to do this around the release of Three Hopes, so if it gets big, I'll probably do a sequel, expanding a bit on everything else. 
So, if you would like for me to go over this, feel free to give a like, comment, and drop the subscribe button. I would really like to have it if people were to look at and enjoy my content.